With the second pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Chase Young, defensive end, Ohio State. But you know as they say, hail to the Redskins. Let's roll, man. Let's go. Uh, got another super chat. This one from my man, Billy Ampafo. My man, Billy Amp, thank you for the super chat. Greatly appreciate you. Billy Amp writes, I'm back, Louie. Good to have you back, man. Missed you, dog. He says, what's good? PFF has us picking top five in the draft next year and either getting Penai Sewell, which I don't mind, or Lawrence slash Fields. Uh, if we're picking top five, that probably means that Dwayne Haskins didn't play very well and that the team may have soured on him. And if that happens, you probably have seen um, uh, Allen at some point at the end of the season and if that happens, then yeah, you'll be picking top five and you'll probably be uh, selecting a quarterback with that pick. That being said, uh, there are other instances where you end up with a top five pick and Dwayne Haskins isn't to blame. And they're not looking for a quarterback and, and instead going with a different position. But we're not picking top five, dude. If we play 16 games um, and, and we stay relatively healthy at all the right positions, we're not picking top five. We're gonna be. We're not gonna be a good team. We're not gonna be the worst team. Okay, like we were one of the worst teams in football last year. Okay, our record bears that out. The fact that we held the second pick in the draft bared that out. At the end of the day, we haven't been that bad, and we've been bad, and we haven't been that bad many times. And so, um, I, I think when it's all said and done, we're gonna look up. The Redskins are gonna be back where we were. Um, in the Jay Gruden era, which is somewhere between 13 and 17, making a selection. And, you know, I'll be fine with that. That means we won seven, six or seven games. And um, we, we were in the, the race, the playoff race, down the stretch, and we just missed out. Or we made a hard charge at the end of the season after starting off the, the season slow, whatever the case may be. Uh, we, we'll be trending in the right direction. And so I, I don't see us with the top five pick, but... That is a great segue um, to something that I want to play for you guys. I think that comment by Billy Amp is the perfect segue to the outside perception, the outward perception of the Redskins offense. And if you listen to uh, people talk about the Redskins offense, it, it's kind of a microcosm of how people feel about this Redskins team overall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play you a quick clip, a snippet from a podcast that I listen to very often. It's called the Kevin Sheehan Show Podcast. And he had a guy that I know not all Redskins fans love uh, on his show in Jason LaCanfora. But say what you want about Jason LaCanfora. He's plugged into the league. All right. He is one of the most um, knowledgeable guys in league circles. He's got a lot of contacts. He talks to a lot of people. He's in the know. All right. And he has a really good pulse of how people view teams on the outside looking in. And so listen to what he had to say about the Redskins offense going in to the 2020 se uh, season. Take a listen. All right. Tell me, guys, tell me, guys, what you think about this. Do they have the right quarterback in Dwayne Haskins? I, I don't think it's going to be. I, I don't think anybody could say they know until 2021 because I, I just don't know what they've given him that you could say is given him. Like, what's in place that will give him a fair shot? I, I don't know what that is. I mean, it's we're in the middle of this pandemic. He can't be around the facility. They have changed everything up again, right? He's on his third coach already. Um, the offensive talent, and I'm putting talent in air quotes, is probably the worst in the league. Um, you know, I, I, even the offensive line, I'm not. <laughs> I have reser major reservations about in the run game. I mean, this Adrian Peterson thing. I mean, I, come on, man. Like that that ship has sailed. Darius Geis is always hurt. I mean, I don't know what he can depend on. Like, I don't know. I mean, other than his right guard, I don't know what he goes to battle. And, and one receiver. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know what you go into any game planning meeting feeling good about. Like, oh, we're going to feature.
feature this guy. Really? Who are you going to feature besides Terry? Like, who? I dare you. Try. So that was pretty damning, okay? That was pretty morbid. I mean, when you hear that, that's what people think of us. That's what people think about our roster, all right? That's what people think of our wide receiver group. So when you read a list that has the Redskins rated 32nd of 32 teams in terms of their wide receiving core, and we just say that it's young, they're not looking at youth. They just think that we stink, okay? When you talk about our offense, and look, he made some very valid points, all right? The offensive line, we don't know. We don't know if we're going to be any good up front. Dwayne Haskins could be running for his life for all we know. Our left side of our line could be a catastrophic disaster, or it could be great. We could have the makings of a dominant left side for all we know. We don't know, all right? Neither does Jason Lockham for, but what he is expressing is the opinion of people outside of this market, people that aren't Redskins fans, that are looking from afar. They think that we stink, that we're going to be one of the worst offenses yet again in the league. Now, in his defense, he did go on to say, after Kevin, Kevin preferenced a question by saying, look, if the Redskins did what the Broncos did for, for uh, Drew Locke, and that's get him all the weaponry that he needs, could Dwayne Haskins be a franchise quarterback? Do you believe in Dwayne Haskins? He said, yes, absolutely. The guy threw 50 touchdowns at Ohio State playing big-time college football. If you got him the weapons, he could thrive, but he doesn't have that. He said that what we did this offseason was next to nothing. So essentially what he said about the Gandhi man, Antonio Gandy Golden and Antonio Gibson and adding those guys was nothing. Okay. Those guys mean absolutely nothing to him. All right. He doesn't see Adrian, Adrian Peterson as a viable threat in the backfield anymore. Doesn't see it. Doesn't think that as a matter of fact, he said that essentially that that's a joke. All right. That that ship has sailed. Darius Geis is always hurt. So he writ he's written him off. And he, he's not thinking about anybody else uh, on this football team outside of Terry McLaurin and our right guard, Brandon Sheriff. He essentially said, who else are you game planning for? And so he essentially dismissed our entire offense is what he did. And that's, he's not alone in that. That's how we're perceived on the outside, okay? So keep that in your brain. So when you hear a guy like Billy Amp bring up that, Pro football focus has us drafting fifth overall next year. It's not because they're just pulling out a, a number out of a hat. Okay, Redskins, you're fifth. We pulled your name out of the hat. No. Pro football focus is thinking like Jason Lockham for that we stink, that we don't have any talent. So what the Redskins have to do is prove everybody wrong. They don't, th what they're saying is you got an unknown commodity as an offensive coordinator. You've got an unknown a bunch of guys at receiver. You've got an old running back that can't do it anymore. You've got an injury-prone running back behind him. You've got a young quarterback that hasn't proven himself and looked pretty damn bad early in the season, showed some promise late, but uh, really don't have anything around him. So what do you expect him to do? And oh, by the way, the offensive line you're putting in front of him, at best, it's going to be patchwork and probably not very good. That's essentially what he just said. I'm summing it up in about um, 30 seconds. All right. That's what everyone's perceiving us to be. Just so you know. So don't be surprised when you see us being ranked 32nd in some offensive category. Or our group of this is ranked dead last in the league. Or uh, pro football focus has us rated, you know, number this. Or has us drafting here. Or this site has us drafting here next year and taking this player. Everyone's projecting the Redskins to be among the worst in the league. We are bottom feeders right now, okay? So I'm hoping that all the guys on the inside are taking all of this in, all right? I hope they understand what they're being viewed as right now. All, all, at the end of the day, none of this matters. However, I'm just giving you some perspective from the outside because we think that we've got talented receivers that are just young. All right. That's what we're saying on the outside. They're saying, no, no, your receivers aren't any good. They're young and they're terrible. OK, you think they're young and good. We think they're young and terrible. 
except for Terry McLaurin, okay? The rest of those guys, they're bums. That's what they're essentially saying. So thank you for the super chat, Billy Amp. That was a great segue to uh, me playing that snippet there that I thought was very, very interesting. Louis. 